وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تبوتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My beloved brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gives virtue to a group of people over other group of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives virtue to a land over another land. This is what Allah does subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun. Allah is not questioned in what he does, why he does it. He can do as he wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, the great Mufassir, he said, Lil-Bari ta'ala an yaf'ala ma yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him is to do as he wishes. Ya khussu bil fadilati ma yasha. Allah specifies virtue to whatever and whatever, whoever He wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَيْسَ لِعَمَلِهِ عِلَّةِ وَلَا عَلَيْهِ حَجْرٌ بَلْ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ بِحِكْمَتِهِ وَقَدْ تَظْهَرُ فِيهِ الْحِكْمَةِ وَقَدْ تَخْفَى The things in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to give virtue to it, there is no one who can come and stop him and say you can't give virtue to this land or these people. Also, Whatever Allah gives virtue to, the reason and the wisdom behind why He gives this place or these people a virtue, sometimes it becomes clear to us. And sometimes we don't know why Allah gave it virtue, subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, on the first face of this earth and this world that we live in today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen places. And He's given these places virtue and status. From the places Allah has given virtue is Ardu Sham. This land that today when we look at on the news, when we watch it on YouTube and see what's taking place, this is a place Allah has given virtue subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has raised the status of a sham beyond any other land after the Haramain, Mecca and Medina. And today, bi idhnillah al kareem I want to bi idhnillah al kareem bring to your attention the greatness and the value of Sham and what is it that's taking place today and its reality. History repeats itself. These things that are happening in Ardu Sham, has it happened before? And what was the outcome? Who got the upper hand from it? Inshallah ta'ala, that is my aim and objective in this khutbah. Bi'idhnillah al-kareem. Ayyuhal ikhwa, my beloved brothers and sisters, the virtue of Sham and the people of Sham is not a matter that I or somebody like me have taken time out to find its virtue. No scholars have written books about it. And I'm going to mention some scholars' names. Ala sabili tamthili al hasr These are some scholars, not all of them. From those scholars are Abu al-Hasan al-Rab'i rahimahullah, Abu Sa'ad al-Sam'ani, Abu al-Faraj ibn al-Jawzi, Bahauddin ibn Asakir, Burhanuddin al-Biqa'i, Diyauddin al-Maqdisi rahimahullah, Al-Izz ibn Abdi Salam, Ibn Abdi al-Hadi and Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, 
Rahimahumullah jami'an, those 10 scholars and many much and many more have spoken about the virtue of Asham. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بْنُ تَيْمِيَةِ He said, ثَبَتَ لِلشَّامِ وَأَهْلِ Virtue have been established for the people of Sham and the land Sham. مَنَاقِبُ بِالْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ The virtues of Sham is established in the Qur'an and it's also established in the Sunnah. وَآثَارِ الْعُلَمَاء And the statements that have been transmitted to us from the scholars, the people of knowledge. وَهِيَ And it is those evidences and the statements of those scholars, Ibn Taymiyyah says, it is from the things I, Ibn Taymiyyah, relied on. When the Tatar entered the Muslim world country, when they entered Sham, and inshallah we're going to speak about who the Tatar are and what took place in Sham. When they came in, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, I brought these verses out, I brought these ahadiths out, and I brought the statements of these scholars. في تحضيض المسلمين to urge the believers to wake up and realize the virtue of a sham. وأمري لهم and I use those evidences to command them بلزوم دمشق that they stay within دمشق they help and they aid these people. ونهي لهم عن الفرار and I also prohibited them based on the evidences that I had in the statements of the scholars. I prohibited them from running away from Sham and being and running away from the banner and the raya, the flag that the people of Sham had, and not to go under the people who were from Egypt. Al-Misri, Ibn Taymiyyah said, these evidences is why I ran to ask for help, military support from Egypt to help us and aid us in in Sham when the Tatars wanted to enter. The Fadail. And the virtues for Asham, we will mention some of them. They are many and they are great. Ya Ikhwa, Sham, this place that you see today, it's a land Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that He has bestowed His blessing onto them. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, وَقَدْ دَلَّ الْقُرْآنُ وَقَدْ دَلَّ الْقُرْآنُ الْعَظِيمُ عَلَى بَرَكَةِ الشَّامِ فِي خَمْسِ آيَاتٍ Five verses have shown the barakah. The blessing of Allah is on Sham and the people of Sham. Then Ibn Taymiyyah brings all of those five, five verses. He says, Al-Ula, the first of them, is Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah. Subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami'u al-basir. Ibn Taymiyyah brings that ayah and Allah says in that ayah that we have made baraka around Dimash, uh, Baytul Maqdis, all of that around it is bittifaqil mufassirin by consensus of the scholars of tafsir is that it's referring to Asham. The second ayah Ibn Taymiyyah brought is when ajayna walutan ila al-ardi allati barakna fiha lil'alameen lil'alameen Allah mentions in this verse we saved Lot and his people and, his pe and some of those who followed him ila al-ardi to the land allati barakna the land in which we have blessed. The third ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الْرِيحَ عَاصِفَةً Allah, He says, we have sent and subjugated great wind, تَجْرِ بِأَمْرِ that moves with the command, تَجْرِ بِأَمْرِهِ it moves with the command of its Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this wind goes towards what? إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا It goes to the land in which we have blessed. وَكُنَّا بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَالِمِينَ Allah said, we have knowledge over everything. قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية ابن تيمية he said, وإنما كانت تجري إلى أرض الشام التي فيها مملكة سليمان. The wind was going towards Sham, the place where the kingdom of Nabi Allah Sulaiman was. The fourth evidence, I mean the fourth ayah that shows Sham is a blessed land, is the statement of Allah. وأورثنا القوم الذين كانوا يستضعفون مشارق الأرض ومغاربها التي باركنا فيها. Allah said. We have given وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْقَوْمِ بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah said we inherited them, we gave to them. الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَضْعَفُونَ Those whose Fir'aun was subjugated and he was destroying and harming them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said we inherited them. مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ The eastern region. وَمَغَارِبِهَا And the western region. الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا In which we have placed barakah in it. Again, Ardu Sham. The fifth evidence 
is وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ Allah says we made and we placed between them وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى and we placed between them and the cities الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا قُرًا ظَاهِرَةً Allah says we placed between them cities that when they left one city the other city was apparent they could see it and this Mujahid Hassan al-Basri, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi, Dhahak ibn Muzahim, and Ibn Zayd, and other than them, all of them they said, Ay Qura al-Sham, the ayah is talking about al-Sham. Ya ikhwa, my beloved brothers and sisters, this place today that we see this taking place, it's a land that Allah has blessed. When Idarika Shaykh al-Islam said, فَهَذِي خَمْسُ نُصُوصِ These are five textual evidences. حَيْثُ ذَكَرَ اللَّهِ Allah mentions in it, Arda al-Sham, he mentions the land of Sham. Fi hijrati Ibrahim ilayha, Nabi Allah Ibrahim migrated to it. Wa masal al-Rasuli ilayha, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the night of Isra wa al-Mi'raj, it was Sham in which he left from, not Makkah, nor Medina. Wa antiqali Bani Israel ilayha, when Allah wanted to save Bani Israel from Fir'aun, there was no other land Allah chose for them except Sham. Wa mamlakatu Sulaiman biha, Nabi Allah Sulaiman's kingdom was in this land Sham. وَمَا سِيرِ سَبَئٍ إِلَيْهَا The people of Saba, the place they would move towards was Sham. وَصَفَهَا All of those five times Allah described them to be what? بِأَنَّهَا الْأَرْضُ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا It's the land Allah has blessed subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the land Allah has chosen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet Nabi Allah Muhammad never travelled out from the Arabian Peninsula except to Sham. Twice. Before Islam with his uncle Abu Talib and after Islam was the Battle of Tabuk. Those are the only two times the Prophet left the Arabian Peninsula and it was to own Sham. This shows us the virtue of this particular place. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنُ تَيْمِيَةِ And Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, both of them, they said, وَالْبَرَكَةُ تَتَنَاوَلُ The barakah that these five verses are talking about, it consists of الْبَرَكَةُ فِي الدِّينِ These people's religion are blessed. Ardu Sham, the people who are living there, is blessed. Today you see a bombing that's taking place in water and the people are dying and you see a mother crying and the words that are coming out of her mouth is La ilaha illallah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, subhanallah is what she's saying. Al barakatu fi deen. These people have been tested for the last, for the last three, four, five years. And they've been struggling and bombing has been taking place on them. Ma'adalika, they have salaba in their religion. Their religion is strong and it's tough. Al-barakatu fi deen. Wal-barakatu fi dunya. These people who shardu sham and what's taking place, the barakah is finally with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the upper hand bi-idhni Allah al-kareem. Al-sham, the people in sham are safwatullahi min ardi. They are the elite people, the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. And Allah has taken upon Himself. If the believers are not going to wake up to help their brothers and sisters, Allah has taken upon Himself that He's going to help them subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعَنْ إِبْنُ حَوَالَةَ The noble companion, Ibn Hawala, he said, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ The messenger said, سَتَصِيرُ الْأَمْرُ The matter will reach إِلَىٰ أَن تَكُونَ جُنُودًا مُجَنَّدًا That there's going to be armed troops. The Muslims are going to break down into Dwaylat countries. Every country has its own troops. The Muslims are going to be divided. The Prophet, he told us this 1,400 and something years ago. You are going to be troops and armies. Bisham, there's going to be an army, an uh, army in Sham. And there's going to be troops in Yemen. And in Iraq, there's going to be troops. Ibn Hawala then said, خِرْ لِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah, choose for me. Which troops should I be under? Which army should I aid and support? In adrak to dhalika if I reach this matter. فَقَالَ The Prophet said to him, عَلَيْكَ بِالشَّامِ Upon you is the people of Sham. فَإِنَّهَا خِيرَةُ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَرْضِهِ The people of Sham are the chosen land and the people are the chosen people. يَجْتَبِي إِلَيْهَا خِيرَتَهُ Allah is going to gather on that land the most noble from amongst us. He's going to place in Sham. فَأَمَّا إِنْ أَبَيْتُمْ If you refuse to be from the troops of Sham and you're not from the army of the people of Sham فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِيَمَنِكُمْ Then go to the army of the people of Yemen. وَاسْقُوا مِنْ عُذْرِكُمْ And drink from 
your tongues fa inna allah takaffala ama fa inna allah tawakkala li bi shami wa ahli and the riwayah of ahmed says fa inna allah takaffala li bi shami wa ahli allah has promised me that he is going to take care and that he is going to raise the status of the people of sham abu abu idris al khawlani rahimahullah idha haddatha bi hadha al hadith whenever he would speak about this hadith and he would mention it he would say man takaffala allah bihi the person or the people in which Allah has taken upon himself to aid and support fala dai'at alayhim then Allah is not going to forsake them subhanahu wa ta'ala al-dhiya' al-maqdisi mentions this in his al-hadith ahadith al-mukhtara wa lidhalika the scholars the ahlul ilm whenever they would leave their countries the place that they would find residency was in al-sham this is the place they would find residency in ata al-khurasani rahimahullah he came from Khurasan and he said, when I left Khurasan and I made the decision that I want to leave my land of Khurasan, I went to the, I went to the people of knowledge, Ahlul Ilm Fil Basra, the people of knowledge in Basra. I sat with them. I asked them, where shall I reside in? Faqalu alayka bi sham. They said, go to the sham, reside there and live there. Said, I went to them, the people of Kufa. I sat with them. I asked them, where do you advise me to live with my children and my family? The people of scholars of Kufa, they said to him, Alayka bi Sham, go to Sham and reside in Sham. He said, I went to Mecca. I went to the people of knowledge in Mecca. I asked them, I've made the decision to move from Khurasan. I want to go somewhere. Where do you advise me? Alayka bi Sham. The people of Mecca said, go to Sham. He said, I went to my final destination. I went to Medina. I asked the scholars of Medina, where shall I reside in? Where shall I live in? And they said, all of them, Qatiba. Alayka bi sham. Go to Sham and reside. For, for verily, they are the best people, as the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam told us. My beloved brothers and sisters, as Qurrat ibn Iyasin narrated, إِذَا فَسَدَ أَهْلُ sham. قرة بن إياس he said قال قال رسول الله that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إذا فسد أهل الشام if the people of Sham become corrupt فلا خير فيكم there's no خير in this ummah after the people of Sham are corrupt and they become corrupt in two things corruption in their religion and their land becomes corrupted as the scholars mention ولذلك ابن حبان رحمه الله في صحيحه he mentioned in his صحيح على هذا الحديث based on his hadith he chapter a bab ذكر الأخبار على أن الفساد إذا عم في الشام يعم ذلك في سائر المدن مدن الإمام ابن حبان he said he mentioned in the narrations that if Sham becomes corrupt then the corruption will spread in every single city after that the corruption starts from Sham يا إخوة my beloved brothers and sisters this is not a coincidence that we see the Muslim countries today burning. Where's Yemen? Where's Sham? Now we have Beitul Maqdis. The Muslims have been told the capital is going to be moved. This is not a coincidence. This is a plan. This is a khitta that's been put down for the Muslims. Are we going to sleep through all of this? Ya ikhwatil kiram. The greatest calamity, I mean, the greatest malahim, fights and battles, and the massacre that's going to take place is going to be in this place, Sham. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in the hadith Abi Darda narrated, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, that the Messenger said, inna fustat al-Muslimin yawm al-Malhamah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the place of assembly, when the day hour comes, at the time of the hour, will be in a place called what? Bilghutati. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it will be in a place called Ghuta, ila janib madinat yuqalu laha dimashqa. This place, Wulta, is a place that is next to Dimashq. It's next to Damascus. Min khayri madain al-sham. And it's from the best cities of al-sham. Now to take this particular hadith and to place it on the waqai' and the reality that we're seeing today, fihi nadha. There's a look to this. We can't take the hadith al-fitan and apply it, not to mention that the reality that's taking place now, even though it hurts the heart, 
and what's taking place in water burns the heart. But this hadith has fully accomplished itself onto it. Walidalika the hadith means and the Hisnul Muslimin, the fortress of the Muslims in which they are going to be in to protect that day when the battle takes place is Ghuta. Ghuta is today where you see burning. The people are dying and the siege has taken place. It's a place called close to Dimash. Walidalika the author, the Sahib. The author of the Kitab Aunul Ma'bud, which is the Sharah of Sunan Sunani Abi Dawood, he says, hadith yadullu. This hadith shows ala fadilati Dimashq, the virtue of Damascus, wa ala fadilati sukaniha, wa ala fadilati, and on the virtue of the people who are residing in it. Fi akhir zaman in the later stages, before the hour comes, the people who are residing in Ghuta are the best of people, as the Prophet said, wa anna hisnu min al fitna, and this is the only fortress. That will protect you from the fitna. And from the virtues of it is, and from the virtues of Sham brothers is that 10,000 individuals whose eyes have seen the messenger walk through Sham. As Ibn Asakir said, 10,000 Sahaba who walked into Damascus, who stayed in there, lived there, went, have all come to this place. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين the great Imam Ibn Muwayhiz Rahimahullah he mentions he says Khayru Fawarisi Tudillu Sama the best horsemen in which the sky will be above who will be beneath the sky Fawarisu min Qaisin it will be a horseman from Qais Yakhrujuna min Ghuta who will come out of Ghuta Dimashq Yuqatiloon al Dajjal who will fight with Dajjal my beloved brothers and sisters, the people of Sham have always gone through battles and jihad. I'm going to read a portion of Kitab al Bidayah wa Nihaya, Ibn Kathir al Rahimahullah. The battle between the Muslims and in Sham, it started at the time of the Messenger. Alayhi salatu and when it first started, it was when the Battle of Tabuk. The Battle of Tabuk was the first time the Muslims and the armies came into contact. ولذلك the نبي الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم he didn't fully open a sham. Abu Bakr came and then Umar came and Umar finished opening it. Umar used Khalid ibn Walid and then he told Khalid ibn Walid to step down and then he placed in him in his place Abu Ubaid Amr ibn Jarrah and Abu Ubaid succeeded in opening Damascus. Ama Damascus. He opened it. After that, many battles started to happen between the Muslims and the Salibiyin, the Romans. Walidalika, the Romans, the last, when Umar radiallahu anhu pushed them out, Hirikla looked at Rome and Hirikla was everybody who controlled Rome. He walked away from Sham and he looked at it and he said to Sham, Alayka salamu ya Suriya, peace be upon you, uh, uh, Dimashq, Ama Sham. There's, this is a final greeting. We will never see each other again. Because you saw the people who took over. Their mindset. How they were. Their iman. Their piety. And their nobility. But the Romans never gave up. They walked away. But they always tried and tried and tried. So they kept sending armies to the Muslims. And many battles took place. From the battles that took place. When the year was 658. Was that. The Tatar came before them and they came to a place called Halab, which is Aleppo. And when they did, they sieged Aleppo. They destroyed Aleppo and they moved towards Beitul Maqdis and they took over. And also they moved towards Egypt. And the leader of Egypt, when he heard Al-Sultan Al-Mudaffar Al-Qutrus, when he heard them coming towards Egypt, he prepared his army. He united the people of Sham. He united them with the people of Egypt. He said, come, let's come together. 
and they was they succeeded in pushing away they succeeded in pushing away the Tatar in a battle named as Ainu Jalut. This battle finished on the on a Friday and the Muslims won. Then the, king, the leader of Egypt didn't give up. He went to Damascus and he fully took it out of their hands. And this became the Muslims' hub. The Muslims always had it in their hand. Time and time came until Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's time. When Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's time came, the battle known as Shakhab, in which Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah reside, lived, and also even participated. Ibn Taymiyyah and other ulama, they played a great role in making sure that they push away any enemies that came in. The Tatar, they came in. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah would walk through the army and the people and he would remind them that the virtue that comes with it. It was in a month of Ramadan. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah commanded the Mujahideen who were fighting. He said, don't fa fast anymore. Break your fast. And they wouldn't take it from him when he gave them the fatwa. So he took food, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and he ate it. And then he said to them, Insha'Allah, he said, we're going to win today. And he would go to the leaders from Egypt because each army had their own banner. So he get, went to each army and he said, don't leave us today, we're going to win. And he went to the people of Sham and he said, we're going to win. And when Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said that the leaders, they said to him, say, Insha'Allah. And Ibn Taymiyyah then said, Insha'Allah, today I'm saying, Insha'Allah, with unwavering conviction. I'm sure that Allah is going to give us victory because we have come with the means. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask him from the bottom of our heart. We believe in him. We know Allah is going to go vi give victory to the people of Sham. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Bashir hadhi al-ummati bis-sana'i wal-rif'ati wal-nasri wa tamkini fil ard Allah promised that he's going to give victory to the believers. But we have to come with the asbab and the means. We have to aid our brothers and sisters. Brothers, we have to put our pocket, money in our hands in our pockets and give towards these people who are suffering. Innocent women and children are dying. Wallahi, you see a building collapsed. A building has collapsed. A person's leg is inside it. A person's face is covered. And today here you are, you're thinking about the room is hot, let's make it a bit cold. And you're thinking about what bed you want to sleep on. Shall I sleep on this bed or not? Or what shall I eat for breakfast? You have so much varieties and what to choose from. There are people who don't have that. Brothers, give what Allah has given you. This money is not yours, it was given to you. What was given to you shouldn't be a problem for you to give it back. For you then to get rewarded for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy this tyrannical leader, Bashar al-Assad and those who are helping him and aiding him, who are destroying the Muslims, who are harming them. Allahumma alayka bihim, fa innahum la yu'jizunak. Oh Allah, destroy them, they don't show you any good. And they are not good towards your believers. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa thabbit aqadamana, wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma makkin l'ibadika al-muslimin al-mustadhafin. وأهلك المعتدين الظالمين الأذلين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة